welcome back to the Shade Tree Garage. Uh, today I have an update on my Quick Jack 5000 system that my son and I have been working on over the last two or three days to get assembled. Uh, it, um, now, I have to tell you, let me get my prop here, the Quick Jack manual is thorough. And uh, I was concerned about the assembly of the hoses and how much um, you know, work there was involved with it. Uh, it is very easy. The instructions are wonderful. Some of the best, most detailed instructions. Uh, that, and even if you're not a mechanical genius, you know, even I figured this out. So that was that was one thing. <clears throat> the uh, now, the manual covers all three systems: the Quick Jack 3500, the 5000, which I have, and the 7000. Now, I opted not to get the 7000 for two reasons. Number one, to save money, save a little money, because it was a little cheaper, the 5000 was cheaper. And two, I don't need to lift anything near 7,000 pounds. You know, I have no heavy vehicle like that. So the 5000 is, is, was fine for me. Now, the manual, as complete as it is, has a couple of, has a couple of updates that aren't, have not yet been made and probably should. For example, the manual refers to Teflon tape, uh, to use Teflon tape with all of the hydraulic hoses, hose fittings, because you have four hoses and you, you must uh, complete the, you must put the ends on all the hoses and you have to use uh, Teflon tape for that. Well, you don't because now they include a liquid thread sealant similar to Loctite. It's a no, there's no name on the uh, bottle, but there's plenty of thread sealant. And you basically coat your threads with that, put on the connector, it's done. It's done and doesn't leak. So that's, 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 that worked out really, really well. You just need two wrenches, one to hold the hose, the other one to crank down on the connector and get it tight, you're done. <clears throat> so assembling the hoses that I feared was going to be a pain in the scooter rumpus was not. Straightforward and simple. Now it took me a minute, admittedly it took my son to help me figure out how to connect the male and female uh, hoses. Uh, you know, you have to uh, uh, pull up on the barrel of the, of the connector to get them to fit together. That's it, probably well explained in the manual, but I didn't, there's parts of the manual I didn't read, obviously. All right, but the quick jack uh, went together easy. Now there were some steps we had to take. For example, you have to, it uses an air cylinder. Each, each quick jack unit has an air cylinder. You have to, well, it, it recommend letting the air out in any oil that might be in the cylinder and then airing it back up to no more than 50 PSI. And that was a simple to do. And the hydraulic cylinders, uh, you, you have to add 2.1 quarts, at least with the Quick Jack 5000, 2.1 quarts of Dexron 2 or 3 or uh, some other compatible tr transmission or hydraulic fluid to the Quick Jack pump reservoir. So got that done. The, um, and your hoses, the hoses aren't pressure, or, uh, they're not pressurized, there's nothing in the hoses, so the Quick Jack does have to do, uh, pump those up, and you have to bleed the air out of each unit uh, and at the end at the one end of the hydraulic cylinder you, you actually have to raise that in using the provided blocks and then uh, when you're when you operate the unit uh, two or three inches at a time over several times it will work the air out to the top of that cylinder and you release the bleeder valve and let it out and it's done it's 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 a lot like bleeding brakes you know <clears throat> now one one big problem well, not one big problem, but a problem that stopped me dead in my tracks was the fact that the manual said that the bleeder screws on the hydraulic cylinders were five millimeter hex keys. All right, no problem. I've got five millimeter hex keys. I've got a couple of uh, sets of, uh, you know, standard SAE and metric uh, hex keys. No problem. So I get out the five millimeter. It won't fit. It won't go, go into the socket on the uh, bleeder screw. I'm like, well, maybe they were wrong. Maybe it's four. So I get out the four. It, 
just flops around in there. So I'm thinking, well, maybe, maybe that bleeder screw got painted real heavy and there's some paint blocking the five millimeter from going in. So I got out the old utility knife and I scraped around a little bit. There wasn't any paint in it that I could see or feel. So I finally decided that, um, that, that it wasn't a five millimeter. It wasn't a four millimeter. It was a four and a half millimeter Allen wrench. Now, I wasn't even sure one of those existed. And so I had to go looking online to find a five and a four and a half millimeter socket. And I did finally find one. I had to buy this set from my local, and I'm not an employee or a sponsor. They're not a sponsor. AutoZone. They had it. My other chain store, uh, auto parts store, did not have it. They had it listed on their website, but um, I didn't uh, search to make sure they had it at the store. They've got it somewhere in, in their corporate Live, you know, have a lineup of stores, but not here. <clears throat> the other one had it. <clears throat> so, with the proper hex key in hand, we were able to bleed the, the hydraulic cylinders. And, um, and they both raise and lower uniformly now. Uh, now, the one thing I have not done, and I'm itching to do, but I uh, want to wait for my son, who's who's tied up this evening. I haven't raised the Plymouth yet with it. Um, the quick jack that I've got each, the quick jacks are on the floor on each side of the car. Yeah, you can see that. If I get my ass out of the way. Yeah, I've got each one and it's ready to go under, um, under the car. Now, so a hack that I, I completed on this and you may be able to see it, you may not. Um, down here on each side, each side, and then down at the far end, I installed some, um, some well, basically they're roller bearings, uh, some rollers, so that this uh, quick jack can, can move easily sideways. Uh, otherwise, it just drags on your concrete, and I have this damn brushed uh, concrete and it's just it it nothing wants to move sideways on it very easily so the uh, the little um, uh, rollers uh, will will help that now i'm still not happy with how the rollers are working they do want to shift position a little bit but really it they don't have to do a lot all they have to do is stay there until it's shifted into place and even if they get a little cattywampus, the only time they're touching the ground is when the when the uh, uh, when the thing is when both when it's all the way down, uh, because both ends of this raise up as the unit lifts the car, so they're not not in, interfering anyway. Uh, now you will find uh, vendors online that are selling. Uh, some fancy, fancier wheels, but actually they're, bra they're brackets with true casters on them. And you can add those to your quick jack. And they look, they look marvelous, but they have a high price tag. And uh, one of the, one of the uh, qualities I think of Shade Tree Mechanics is we are, well, I'll say thrifty rather than cheap ass. Uh, we are thrifty. And I can, after spending the money to buy a quick jack, quick jack, pardon me, I'm not going to spend several hundred dollars to buy brackets with casters. Um, in fact, I may just copy their their design and make my own brackets. Um, and again, because they they're not load bearing, they're only load bearing the weight of the quick jack as you move it around. So that's not uh, not not extreme weight. I think each. Each unit weighs 70, 80 pounds. And they have wheels on the far end of it, so you could pick up this end and drag the thing around. So it's not, uh, not impossible to move. It's just having even the rollers that, are, uh, uh, that I have uh, zip-tied to the, to, the, to the frame is a help. All right, um, 
Um, again, the, the quick, don't be afraid of the quick jack system. It uh, is easy to put together, very straightforward. And um, the biggest mess I made was uh, filling it with hydraulic fluid. Now the instructions say, use a small funnel so you don't spill uh, hydraulic fluid everywhere or transmission fluid everywhere. I did not. And I spilled transmission fluid everywhere. Um, of course, you just wipe it up with a rag. No, uh, no biggie. <laughs> But uh, they, they, the, like I said, the, if nothing else, the quick jack manual is thorough. All right, well, I think I'm just about uh, covered everything here um, in the shade tree garage. I haven't gotten back to my uh, oil bath air cleaner conversion uh, yet. I've got, the, um, I've got all the spot welds done on the lid. Um, I'm a little unhappy with it because the lid is sitting a, about a half inch lower than I really wanted. So I'm going to have to uh, have some sort of spacer or something uh, or uh, uh, to raise that up a little bit. The problem is the lid, if it sets too low, that reduces the airflow that's coming in. And it's probably sufficient the way it is. It just looks a little lower than I like. So it's more an aesthetic thing than anything else. All right. Well, that's going to do it. I've, I've jabbered on long enough. Um, I need to get the quick jack in place and um, get a video of raising this thing up for the first time. And I do have some things I've got to, uh, I've got to do while I have it raised. Number one is the uh, leaking uh, fuel filler tube on the, on the back end. Uh, the, when, I, when I put fuel in it and it above, goes above about approximately half full, um, one of my filler tubes, the filler tube or the vent that's parallel to it, one of those leak and they leak substantially. And if you get your fuel level above uh, that point where they come into the tank, it will continue to leak even when you're parked at your favorite cruise. Now, I don't consider that a huge problem, but the other guys you're parked next to might, might consider that a problem that your car is leaking, has a puddle of gasoline behind it. So <clears throat> anyway, that's one of the next things I'm going to check once I get it lifted. Uh, a couple other things. My wife is really interested in getting seat belts installed, and I need access to the uh, underneath the floorboard to make sure I don't uh, drill a mounting hole through a brake line or something equally as important. Um, I don't think there's anything in the way, but I don't want to guess. So I've got seat belts to install and uh, hope to get those in. Video. All right, well, thanks for tuning in to the Shade Tree Garage. And uh, I'll have uh, more information later and uh, we'll test out this quick jack and see how good a job we did assembling it and bleeding the air cylinder and hydraulics. So until then, uh, the weather is beautiful here in central Kentucky. Uh, get out and get your car out and cruise, enjoy the weather. And uh, we'll see you next time here in the Shade Tree Garage.